Welcome to two projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project Improved YOLO V5S algorithm for small target detection in UAV aerial photography. Before diving into the execution, let me give you an overview of the project. So small target detection in UAV aerial photography involves pinpointing specific objects within images taken from drones or aerial view. So this task is challenging due to the small size of the objects and the complex backgrounds present in the aerial imagery. To tackle this, deep learning models like YOLO are employed in this project. First, objects of interest such as people, vehicles, vans, cars, bicycles, etc. are defined as classes to be detected within the images and the system scans through the images searching for objects based on the defined classes. When an object matching one of the defined classes is found, the system draws a bounding box around it to precisely locate it within the image. Objects may appear differently depending on factors like distance and angle. So the system learns to understand these contextual variations to accurately identify objects. Through exposure to a diverse dataset containing examples of each class, the system learns to recognize objects under various conditions. So the model is continuously refined through feedback mechanisms ensuring it becomes more accurate over time. Traditional methods of doing this, that is pinpointing small targets in aerial images often struggle due to limitations in accuracy and efficiency particularly when dealing with complex backgrounds. So YOLO offers a promising alternative. Through extensive training on diverse datasets, YOLO continuously improves its ability to recognize objects under various conditions, ensuring reliable performance over time. This makes YOLO an invaluable tool for applications such as surveillance, urban planning, and disaster response where precise and efficient target detection is important. So we will be employing YOLO algorithms in this project for object detection. So we will be using aerial images in this project to train the deep learning models. So the process begins with a thorough exploration of the data set, these aerial images data set. So here images are read and processed to prepare them for training. This involves annotating object classes and bounding boxes, converting images into suitable formats, that is NumPy arrays, and applying pre-processing techniques such as color space conversion, RGB to GBR, and resizing to the same size. And various pre-trained models like TPH YOLO V5, improved YOLO V5 with darknet backbone, YOLO V5M, YOLO V5L, YOLO V5S, etc. are examined to understand their architectures. Following this, data augmentation techniques are employed to increase dataset diversity. So we will be training the models on increased set of examples. That is, we will be training the models on the original images from different angles so that the models can generalize well with any condition. So models are trained iteratively on the augmented data set with adjustments made to their parameters to improve detection accuracy. Finally, the trained models are evaluated using validation data to select the most effective one based on metrics like accuracy and speed for small target detection in UAV aerial photography. This is what happens in this project. Overall, this project focuses on improving spotting small objects within aerial images captured by drones by surpassing the limitations of conventional methods and leveraging sophisticated deep learning techniques the objective is to enhance the efficiency and dependability of object detection. This will benefit government agencies who monitor, who can monitor more effectively. Urban planners can understand traffic and cities better. 
disaster teams can spot dangers and assess damage quickly and researchers can develop better drone and vision tech now we'll see the software and hardware requirements to execute this project hardware requirements are operating system of windows processor of i5 and above ram of 8 gb and above and hard disk of 25 gb and above software requirements are application needed is anaconda primary language required is python front end framework required is flask back end framework needed is jupyter notebook database needed is sql lite 3 and front end technologies required are html css javascript and bootstrap 4 now we'll look at the algorithms built so in the base paper author has proposed improved yolo v5s which uses darknet as the backbone and he compared this model with these yolo versions among these models the proposed improved yolo v5s has outperformed the other models for improved performance we are proposing yolo v5x6 and yolo v8n in this project so we will be building all these models the models proposed by the author and the models which we are proposing we'll compare their performance and select the best performing one among them for object detection now we'll understand about the algorithms which we have proposed so yolo that is you only look once is a computer vision object detection algorithm that quickly identifies objects in images by splitting the input image into a grid and simultaneously predicting bounding boxes and class probabilities unlike traditional methods yolo processes the image just once making it extremely fast it predicts multiple bounding boxes and their associated class probabilities for each grid cell and then removes redundant detections using non maximum suppression so this results in a final list of detected objects along with their bounding boxes and probabilities this is how yolo works so these are different architectures in yolo coming to yolo v5x6 it is a variant of the yolo v5 object detection model designed to strike a balance between accuracy and speed with around 2.4 million parameters it offers good precision and recall while maintaining efficient processing speed its architecture is optimized to handle 1280 by 1280 input images making it suitable for real time object detection tasks yolo v5x6 is chosen for this project due to its ability to provide accurate and fast detection making it well suited for identifying small targets in uav aerial photography its medium sized architecture and optimized parameters allow for efficient processing of aerial images while maintaining high detection accuracy aligning perfectly with the project's objective of enhancing small target detection capabilities in complex aerial environments coming to yolo v8n it is the smallest model within the yolo v8 series prioritizing speed over accuracy making it well suited for real time object detection tasks on devices with limited processing capabilities it inherits the speed and accuracy reputation of the yolo series denoted by yolo v8 while the suffix n represents its nano size variant indicating its compact and lightweight design despite sacrificing some accuracy compared to larger yolo v8 models like yolo v8s yolo v8n remains efficient for various applications boasting a smaller model size with fewer parameters which enables smooth deployment on edge devices so yolo v8n is ideal for this project due to its emphasis on speed making it well suited for real time object detection tasks on resource constrained devices commonly used in uav applications so this is about the proposed models So after training all these models and comparing their performance we have observed that Yolo V5X6 has outperformed all of the models in all the performance metrics so we have deployed it into flask web application so we will be executing the project using flask before execution we have to open the code folder which contains the project source code files
So this is the code folder and these are the contents I have in the code folder. In sample folder, I have images on which will make the detections. This is static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc., which represent different pages of the website. These are YOLO v5, YOLO v7 and YOLO v8 folders in which I have required data set. So I'm opening YOLO v5 folder. So here we can see I have train and valid folders. I'm opening train folder. We can see I have two subsets again, images and labels. So in images folder, I have these aerial images. And in label folder, I have annotation files. So each label file or annotation file corresponds to an image file in the images folder. So this annotation file corresponds to this image. Similarly, this annotation file corresponds to this image in the same way each annotation file corresponds to an image in the images folder. So these annotation files provide details about the objects, locations and classes within the image. So they follow the YOLO format where each line represents a detected object and each line specifies the object's class index. So this is the first column is the class index followed by bounding box coordinates normalized to the image dimensions. These are the bounding box coordinates, X limit, Y limit, width and the height. So we can see these are all the detected objects in the first image. In the same way, I have class index followed by the bounding box coordinates in these other folders also. So on these images, and these label files, we will be training the YOLO models. Similarly, I have images and label folders in validation folder also. On these images and label files, we will be evaluating the models, the built YOLO models performance. And we can see we have YOLO v5, YOLO v7, YOLO v8 folders separately. Each folder contains the same images, but they are annotated differently. We will have different label files because each YOLO version requires its own specific type of image annotations for training and testing the models effectively. Having separate folders helps keep the data set organized and ensures that each YOLO version receives the correct annotations it needs to function properly. And this is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to front-end logic. It includes code data in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. And these are model files which contain algorithm information. These files will be loaded into the project code during runtime to utilize the trained models. This is notebook Jupyter source file, which contains a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. So Jupyter notebook allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. And this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. So it stores information like signup details of the users. So this is about the code folder. Now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. This is the path. I'm copying it. Open Anaconda prompt. Use the command CD followed by space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command is used to change the current directory to the code folders path. Now compile the app.py file using the command Python space app.py. I'm typing Python space app.py and hit the enter button. 
So this command will execute the Python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address, local host and port unless configured differently. So this is the local host and this is the port. Now copy the local link provided by the framework. I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I usually prefer Chrome. After pasting it, hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. So this is the front end. Here we can see a register link, click on it. So if we are new users, we have to register ourselves first, fill in all these details and click on register button to sign up. And if we already have an account, we can directly log in by clicking on this link. So as I'm already a member, I'm clicking on this link. Here we have to give our credentials, username and password. I'm giving mine. And click on login button. So it has redirected us to the detection page. So now we have to upload any aerial image here and the application will detect the objects from the image. Click on choose file button. So from sample images folder, these are the test cases I have. So we'll upload this image, select the image, click on open. The image has been loaded. Now click on upload button. This is the uploaded image and we can see the application has detected different objects. It has differentiated them with different colored bounding boxes. We can see it has detected cars. It has detected people. It has detected bike. It has detected bicycle. It has detected van. And it has drawn different colored bounding boxes around them. Differentiating them. And we can see the labels. Car, people, bike, van, bicycle. And beside the labels, we can see a probability score telling us the confidence level of the application, the system, in classifying them. Click on back. Click on choose file. This time we'll try with this image. Select the image, click on open. The image has been loaded. Now click on upload button. We can see the application has detected bicycle. It has detected people. It has detected the car. It has drawn bounding box around the detected objects. And we can see the label. And beside the label, we can see the probability scores telling us the confidence level of the application in classifying them into that particular class. We'll try with some more test cases. Click on choose file. We'll try with this image, select the image, click on open and click on upload. We can see the application has detected the cars and it has detected the people. It has drawn bounding box around the objects detected. This time we'll try with this image. So we can see the detections and the classifications and the probability scores. Click on choose file. Select any image from the test cases. We'll try with this image. We can see the application has detected the cars, the truck, the van and the people. It has drawn different colored bounding boxes around them.
differentiating them. Click on choose file, select the image. We'll try with this image. Here we can see the application has detected the people, the vans, the cars, the bike. And we can see the probability scores telling us the confidence level of the application. Similarly, we can upload any image from the test cases and can get the detections of the objects. We'll try with this one. We can see the detections. We'll try with one more. We can see the application has detected all the people. In the same way, click on choose file, select the image. Click on open and click on upload button. And we can see the detections. So we can see it has detected the cars, it has detected the bus, it has detected bicycle, and it has detected the bike. It has classified them using different colored bounding boxes. Red, uh, orange for bus, yellow for car, red for bicycle, and peach color for bike. So it has differentiated them using different colored bounding boxes. So in this way, we can make the detections. Here we can see a graph link, click on it. So here we can view all the visualizations made. This is precision and recall graph of YOLO. This is F1 score graph of YOLO. This is confusion metrics graph. And this is precision scores comparison graph. In this graph, next axis, I have precision scores and on Y axis, I have algorithm names. This is recall scores comparison graph. Similarly, this is MAP scores comparison graph. So we can see from all the performance metrics, YOLO V5XX is doing well in all the performance metrics. Now click on logout. So the project enhanced small target detection in UAV aerial photography by developing and deploying YOLO versions. Balancing accuracy and speed, these models empower surveillance, urban planning, disaster response, and UAV technology research with efficient and reliable object detection capabilities. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.